When you buy a spool of filament, usually PLA, there's always going to be a little temperature range on the side of it. It may say prints in between 180 and 220 degrees Celsius. This is a pretty common range, but what temperature do you actually use? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I just split the difference and go right down the middle, and then their prints don't come out very good. It's either under extruded or it's producing a bunch of strings. So in this class, we will find out exactly what temperature do you print your filament. Now there is no perfect value because whatever I'm printing adjusts to the temperature in this room. If I live in a warmer climate, then it doesn't need as high a temperature on the hot end to get everything melty. If I live in a colder climate, well then I'll probably need to crank up the heat a little bit or even make an enclosure that goes around my entire printer to keep everything nice and warm. So the general rule is if I print too cold, then my extruder literally can't push the material into the hot end fast enough. And so I'll end up with what's known as under extrusion. And in the extremes, this can cause a clogged nozzle and you get a print that's almost like a foam where there's no plastic actually holding anything together. On the opposite end, if you print a material too hot, then it has become so liquidy that anytime your nozzle is traveling or when it's moving but not printing, then it's leaving behind a ton of strings. And we'll get into trying to fix stringing later, but for now we're going to be finding that ideal value. So within this range, there will be a sweet spot around 200 degrees where it's not hot enough to cause stringing, but it's also not so cold that you'll hear your extruder knob clicking, clicking, clicking because it's under extruding. We can find this ideal temperature by printing something known as a temperature tower. Uh, this is a pretty simple part to print, but the difficulty comes in actually how to calibrate that material. What it does is by printing two columns that have a certain distance apart, we are forcing it to string as much as possible. This will start to print at a higher temperature on the bottom, and as it goes through layer by layer or in separate block by block, the temperature gets decreased. And this is something that we can work on in Cura. But on this specific temperature tower, as you can see, on the very bottom, you get a little bit of stringing. And then as it gets higher and higher, because the temperature is not hot enough to melt it, by the time it got to the last level, it literally collapsed on itself. It wasn't hot enough to fuse to the bottom layer. And so it's literally hanging on by a thread. Obviously this would be way too cold a temperature, but if you didn't print a test like this, how would you know? So by going through this and dialing in all those values, we're able to get the perfect temperature right off the bat. On the Cure side, we're gonna be going into how to add a script. Now script is just a paragraph code. And for us, we're basically saying, okay, when you reach this layer, whatever it may be, I want you to change the temperature to a new value and make sure you hold that value until I tell you to change it otherwise. What I just said there is known as pseudocode. And it's a really good way if you're learning coding or any other programming software to kind of work through the human nature side of programming before you actually get into the program. So to print our temperature tower, we need to grab a file and we're gonna be going into Thingiverse to find one. Now there are lots and lots of different types of temperature towers, but we have actually already made one right here. And it's gonna start at 240 degrees and progress up to 180 degrees in five degree increments. Uh, and they're all gonna look like this, but you want to pick the one that has a very high temperature on the bottom and a very low temperature on top. The reason we wanna do this is because we want the highest temperature so our material can melt and really grab into the grit in the bed. Uh, if you have a high printing temperature plastic and you start at the lowest temperature on the bottom, it may not even extrude. It's very likely that it'll just cause a jam and it will not, and, and your entire print will just fail. So make sure you find one with the large temperature on the bottom and it will decrease in temperature as we go upwards. We can go ahead and download this file and then we can go into Cura and go ahead and import it. Now I'm going to be slicing this with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Um, I don't really need to have a super good quality uh, and we can have this print kind of quickly. It's purely just a test, but they are all going to look like this where we have two columns and we want to encourage as much stringing as we possibly can with all of our numbers recorded on the side. 
So let's go ahead and change some values. So we know we want 0.2 layer height. So I'm gonna go up to my printer settings and I'm gonna change my layer height from my normal 1.6 to 0 0.20. And my initial layer height, I also wanna make that 0 0.2 millimeters tall. And my very first layer down here is gonna be 240 degrees Celsius. So I want to make that 240 up here as well. So my printing temperature, I'm gonna change the 240 as well as my initial printing temperature. Uh, don't worry about anything else, this will be changed. Now the first thing we want to do is actually go ahead and slice this model. And we're gonna do this so we can actually note exactly all of the layers where our bridges happen. So I'm gonna click a preview and when we do this, we can actually take a front view look at this and see exactly what layers are, how are we causing all of these changes to happen at. So normally when you'd have this, you can go through all of the levels and then write down this number on the right hand side of our slider exactly when it's changing uh, to a different layer. Um, but if you download our file, uh, we already have all of the layer changes and what degrees they uh, we actually want to change to. And this is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video specifically. So we'll do a couple layer changes for this print, but then I want you guys to go ahead and make your entire file completely correct. So we're gonna focus on our first one, which is at layer 39, I wanna change it from 240 degrees Celsius to 235. So I'm gonna go back into Cura and we can actually add what's known as a script. And this is going to be in the extensions section. So we'll go extension, post-processing, and then modify G-code. And when we do this, we have this little post-processing plugin script. Uh, we can go ahead and click add a script right here. And we're met with a big long list of all the different things that we can add into or a paragraph of code that we can add into our G-code. So when it reaches that line, it can actually make us uh, or do something for us. Um, the one that I always have is display progress on LCD. So every 15 seconds that passes by on my little screen, it updates saying, how much time do you have left? So you can add a bunch of really, really useful uh, features into your prints just like this. But for this class, we are going to add a script known as change at Z. What this means is that when we, ch when we get to a certain layer height in the Z direction, whatever that may be, we can say, hey, change some feature. Uh, we can say, change the speed, change the flow rate, change the bed temperature, uh, change the fan speed. But for today, we're gonna be working on change the extruder one temperature. And just like we had in our Thingiverse, we want to change to 235 degrees at layer 39. So let's go back into Kira, and I'm gonna say, instead of height, I want to go to my layer number. And I want my layer number to be 39. And I want to apply this to my target layer and all of my subsequent layers. So not just that one, I want to say, print that 240 degrees until I get to that nook, and then continue on upwards. Uh, I don't really want to change the flow rate, I would like to change the extruder temperature. And we're gonna change this to 235 degrees. And as soon as we do that, well, we need to re-slice our model. And you'll notice down at the bottom, uh, near the preview, we actually have a number two, and that's because we have two scripts going on in here. We have display the time left on the LCD, and then change to a new temperature at that point. So as we look at our model, and we can go ahead and change the color, I've said, as soon as you reach layer 39, there we go, change it from 240, which is the previous printing temperature, up to 235. And as we go through the layers, I want to add a new block of script for every single block that we have here. Now, the reason we've chosen 240 is because this is the absolute hottest that the Ender 3 can print, and 180 is the absolute coldest that it can print. So any material that you have, whether it's ABS, PETG, TPU, or PLA in this instance, it is going to be found in that areas. Now there are some exotic 3D printing material that actually require much, much hotter uh, plastic to print, but they're so exotic that you not very, it's not very common that you'll come across it anyway. 
So let's go ahead and add a couple more in here. So I'm gonna go back into my Thingiverse and my next one is going to be at layer 74, change to 230 degrees. So we can go back into Cura, same thing. We'll go post-processing, modify G-code, and then add a new script. And we'll do the exact same thing, change at Z, and I'll let you guys go through all of these settings. And at the very end, you should have every single, well, a new script for every single block that we go through, finishing at this layer right here, up at 180. As soon as you do this, you can go ahead and slice it and then send it to your printer. And as soon as you're done with your print, I want you to go back to this little block next to your slice, and you can go ahead and delete all of these scripts that you don't need. If you forget this, then the next time you do uh, a normal print, then as soon as it reaches that exact same layer that you set, it will change to a brand new value. So go ahead and get the time-lapse started. So now that your print is done, you can start to do the analyzing portion. You'll notice at the bottom levels that because it's actually so hot, you'll find a ton of stringing. So you don't want to deal with any of that. And as you get through it, right about in the middle, you'll notice that all the stringing disappears or it leaves really, really thin webs. Don't really worry too much about that. And then as you get higher and higher and higher, you'll find that the material comes slightly crumbly all of the sharp edges are now starting to curl up a little bit and uh, in this case it completely destroys itself so finding that middle value is going to be the name of the game and then as soon as you have it it is going to be based on just that roll of filament there are some filaments that print pretty normally some materials that need to print at a lower temperature some that need to print on a higher temperature so as soon as you find that value Grab a Sharpie and make sure you write it on the side of that filament so anytime you're doing another project with that colored filament, you know exactly what to set it at.